Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Please consider liking this video. I will appreciate you so much. Ensure you subscribe. You give your opinion at the comment section below. And don't forget to share this video. I have realized that William Ruto's education sector is already failing. Number two, health sector is again failing. Transport and infrastructure sector is also failing. These three sectors are being led by William Ruto's cabinet ministers. Education sector is being led by C.S. Machubu. Health sector is being led by Susan Nahumisha. Transport and infrastructure is being led by Kipchumba Murkome. When you look at the circus dramas in these sectors, you will realize that this is the core. And if William Ruto is not going to correct the messes we are seeing today, then we are no longer going to have education. We are no longer going to have health. We are not going to have road and transport. In this video, I want us to have discussion why William Ruto is seriously failing. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this video and you have not liked this video, please do me a favor and show you like this video. When you like this video, you support the work of this channel. If you are a Vista for the first time, visiting this channel, subscribe. And also, for those who are returning subscribers, thank you so much because of your great, great support. Now, let us dive into the main discussion. Number one, health sector. William Bruto told you that Anatoa Ile NHIF and a letter shift, S-H-I-F, and after bringing this, William Ruto assured Kenyans that everything in terms of health is going to be so paramount. Kwamba, you register, then you get service. The question we ask ourselves, this transition from NHIF to SHIF, that is S-H-I-F, is there Trans is there a kind of transparency in this transition? Because last time ESCC raised an alarm that initially there was scandals in NHF. So those who involve themselves in this scandal of NHF, they are going to be eased because now it is being transit, transited from NHF to SHIF. But at the same time, the question is, what is this assurance that Kenyans are going to benefit from this SHIF? Because already, as you speak, bigger percentage of Kenyans are registered kwa health coverage, as you speak. So it will take time to at least absorb these people. But I don't want us to talk about NHF and SHIF. As you speak, several counties are experiencing doctors' strikes. Doctors are in strike. And you will realize that some counties, they don't have doctors. People are suffering. They are sick. No one is coming out to assist them. Does it mean that the CS Nahumesha is not having a priority to correct the mess that has been there in hell, rather doubling the mess that she got in health sector. I thought like William Ruto, as per his assurance to Kenyans, that he was going to correct messes we were experiencing in health sector. Now, as you speak, everything is mess. It is getting messy and noisy, number two. Look at education. Education sector 
is also failing. As education sector is failing, remember one thing. Remember one thing. The capitation is failing as money has not been disbursed to different uh, schools. How do you expect schools to fund their programs and operations, yet you have not disbursed the capitation? The same counties, they have not received their money. At the same time, they say, you're telling us that all mafuta merudi chini dola inarudi chini tunaendelea na kujenga manyumba hasa fandiko pale this does not resolve our problems how you can resolve our problems is to have it right release capitation to our schools that this is an extremely weighty matter that uh, needs to be treated with this seriousness it deserves. So yesterday, I'm sure you heard uh, the PS uh, uh, from the Ministry of Education uh, once again announcing that it will release that the ministry will release uh, funds to schools next week. We have lost count of the numerous times such promises have been made since the Kenya Kwanza regime took over. This is turning out to be a game of lies, managing the public on the one hand while setting up school heads for failure, which the ministry has now perfected. No plausible reason has been given as to why funds that should have been disbursed earlier in the term are only being disbursed towards the end of the term. If at all, they'll be disbursed. It is for this reason that we take the position that the Ministry of Education is setting up school heads and managers for ridicule, failure, and blame. In the process, our children are collateral. Whenever the Ministry of Education has come under pressure, over disbursement of funds to schools. They do what they did yesterday. That is, they assemble the media, put together some figures, and announce that the money will be released the following week. Most times, it never gets done. And when it is done, it is never sufficient. It's a vicious cycle, really. Even if it were to be actualized, what the ministry announced yesterday would still amount to a mere 25% of money which is due to schools. Unfortunately, these funds are coming too little, uh, too late. Whenever the ministry announces the funds or the release of the funds, suppliers flood schools, students make demands, and PTAs assume all is well regardless of how small the amount released is or whether it actually ever gets released. The Ministry of Education is running the critical sector by setting up principals, school heads, and managers for failure, and then lying to learners and parents. This must stop. We are here to call out the government on the lies that have now crippled schools and exposed otherwise innocent principals, head teachers, and school managers to the wrath of parents and learners who buy into government lies that funds have been released to schools and other learning institutions. The casualty is none other than the millions of Kenyan learners who are staring at the bleak future. To say that schools are struggling uh, because of acute financial problems is a serious understatement. Currently, the Kenya Kwanza administration owes close to Kenya shillings 52.8 billion in free day secondary school uh, uh, fund, dating back to the year 2021. 
this is testament, testament enough to the lack of commitment by the government to the future of these countries school buying children. Funds are yet to be remitted to schools for Form 1 students in secondary schools whose first term is set to come to an end in a matter of weeks, in fact two weeks, from what I gather. Equally, there is neither any commitment nor, in, nor indication from the government that when schools reopen for second term, the monies will have been disbursed. It is nothing short of a miracle, really, that the schools are open and running. However, the miracle is short-lived since school administrators are running out of tricks to convince suppliers to keep supplying food items and learning materials to their schools. Feeding the students is an uphill task for the school administrators. And for some schools, it is just a matter of time before there is student unrest due to hunger. We had the PS uh, lament that this capitation money is not meant for feeding children or pupils. Well, he must be made to understand that there's a ripple effect. When you don't release capitation money, it affects every other school program. Okay? Directly or indirectly. In a bid to make ends meet, some schools have resorted to either increasing boarding fees, food rationing, or changing the students' menu altogether to make ends meet. The situation is dire as for the first time since 2005. Parents have been left with no choice but to buy exercise books for their children. Further, a number of schools are contemplating closing school earlier than scheduled and doing away with end of term tests because they can no longer afford basics like stationery. Some school administrators admit that they are forced to pay to play hide and seek with school suppliers who are constantly and rightfully so uh, <coughs> demanding payments from these schools. In other cases, schools have resorted to slashing budget for extracurricular activities. It is as pathetic as it is chaotic. The present state of affairs in our schools is a great shame to this nation. The net effect of all current ongoings is that schools will resort to provision of compromised basic education, which will have incalculable ramifications on the status of education in Kenya and the future of Kenyan children. In fact, the impact of this unfortunate turn of events is already being felt across the country in the form of mass failures. In last year's KCAC, for instance, over 49,000 candidates scored grade E. As you know, grade E is normally scored between a uh, max of 0 to 5. This trend of increasing failure rates in high school has persisted for the last three years, with 2023 being the worst performed KCSC examination in the recent past. The ministry is silent about this because they know poor funding is a key contributor to such mass failures. Amid all the chaos in the education sector, the government is still not transparent about this matter and has resorted to open lies on the matter. In the current financial year, schools have only received a paltry Kenya shillings 7,300 out of the required Kenya shillings 22,200 per annum. Other school officials say the figure disbursed is as low as 3,800 per lan. In any event, whatever the figure, it is way lower than the stipulated Kenya shillings 22,200. Given the foregoing, we demand that the government immediately stops the lies and releases the entire Kenya shillings 52.8 billion owed to schools. On the one hand, the government must also embark on timely disbursement of capitation funds with the payment schedule made public to learners. On the other hand, the Ministry of Education must immediately seize the habit of withholding part of the school capitation without good reason. 
as a matter of fact, the current capitation amount was arrived at way back in 2017 and must therefore be adjusted upwards to take into account the rising inflation rate. We are challenging the Kenya Kwanza regime to come out and tell Kenyans whether it has done away with the free primary and free secondary education. Because from the look of things, this seems to be the case. We are calling on teachers and parents to stop struggling in fear and to speak out boldly for our children whose future is being stolen by this regime. Neither parents nor the head teachers should cover up for the government. Let it be known to all and sundry that things are not working in the education sector. School heads have run out of ideas to run schools without money, and parents cannot afford the monies that they were in fact promised that the government would cut up. The Kenya Kwanza must own up to the mess that is in the education sector and do what is right for our children and our hardworking teachers. So that's basically the end of the statement. And uh, it is self-explanatory that if nothing is done urgently, we are likely to see a crisis of monumental proportions, not only in our high schools, but in the entire education sector, <coughs> that something is not adding up. The government continues to promise release of capitation funds, and which funds never get to schools. What is happening between the promise and the, and the national treasury is something that is beyond our imagination. So thank you very much. So as per the complaints of the opposition, members of parliament, that it will reach a time that now students will storm the streets, demonstrating because the government has not disbursed the resources. And they are waiting. At the same time, ladies and gentlemen, Kenyans are frustrated and you think that William Ruto is doing it right. William Ruto is not doing it right. Take, take it for me. Take it from me. William Ruto is not doing it right. You might think that I'm wrong, but I'm telling you, William Ruto is not doing it right. Look at the circus. Yesterday, to make one accident, Karibu Tatu, Watu wamekufa. Kulingana na road, infrastructure, road transport and infrastructure, the CS, Kipchumba Mungu, unasikia anaongelea vitu zingine opposite, ati anasema, hizi mabarabara jawe kwa langi, huwa ma-accident hakuna huko. So we are being fooled, we are being fooled by these individuals that what they are doing is right. You cannot live a luxurious life in status, spending more 3.3 billion Kenyan shillings. 3.3 billion Kenyan shillings. Then counties are receive their money. Shule receive their capitation. In the health sector, remember one thing. Akuna pesa ya kufund our my interns. At the same time, doctors work on strike. There's no money. You never honor their CBA agreement. So I think this Kenya Kwanza government, if they will not prioritize it right, then take it for me. William Ruto is terribly failing. He is terribly failing. Na kita umana na watu watarudi kwa streets. Watu watarudi kwa streets. And this person who will lead Kenyans, storming the street, you know, tunajuliza ni nani. Because people thought like, it was Rai Udinga who will continue building up and bringing Kenyan to, Kenyans together to understand their problems. But for now, what you're seeing is literally not the expectations of Kenyans. I think the opposition should come out to, pray, to give this government pressure. Because already, education is failing. Machogu wa share ribu kila kitu. Ukiangalea health na umesha meyaribu. Ukiangalea road transport and infrastructure, kipchumba meyaribu. You know? Everywhere. And this sector, inazidi kudorora day in, day out. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think?
Drop your opinion at the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you so much because of your great support. Please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing this video. Bye-bye till you meet on another video.